It might ask you to say yes to that. It did. Okay, cool. All right. I so said yes. You said yes. It's like, will you go with me? Yes or no? Yes, I will. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's Shelia Stevens here. Um, you must know me if you're in this group and watching this live. And today we are doing a Sunday play with Coach Michael Imas. Michael, do you want to say hello with your gorgeous uh, hair today? Hello, everybody. And thank you so much. We were just wanting to have some fun today, and um, I'm going to be just hanging out with M Michael. Maybe I'll just change to Michael since we're speaking English. It's easier to say. And For sure. we're going to be speaking a little bit about the three principles. We're going to be jamming out on the piano um, and finding out a little bit more about Michael and um, yeah, his work as a coach um, in this in this area. And um, let's just dive on in there after a lot of technical craziness that we have <laughs> going on in the background. So, Michael, and thanks I, for having me. You're, you're welcome, Michael and I. We um, we met each other um, on Michael Neal's Effortless Success Mastermind a couple of months ago. Michael, when did we start that? Was it back in May? I think May the fifth or something. I think it was June the 1st, actually. Okay. I thought it was in May, but yeah, see, there you go in my memory. And we've been, we've been meeting um, once a month in the big group, and we've been exchanging ideas and insights around effortless success. And I think we got paired up all, almost already on the first day. Um, yeah of the mastermind and we were like no way i'm in germany you're in germany <laughs> can, can you remember that michael yeah i i can uh i was really happy we had really nice really nice chats yeah and uh, it was a really nice start like i it's a it's a really it's a really nice program um michael michael knows what he's doing mm. yeah he absolutely does and we've been having a lot of fun and Michael and I have been sort of rogue chatting on the side in WhatsApp. <laughs> we we exchange information about curly hair because we both have curly hair. Um, Michael's been playing some piano, but just to give you a, a little bit of background about Michael's, so this is what I learned on the first day when we got paired up. I learned that Michael is a pretty young, almost 30, you're 30 years old, right? Is that correct? 29. 29 years old he's been coaching however for 10 years is that is that the right amount oh, soon yeah i i started my business officially in 2014 okay so that's that was completely fascinating to me from the get-go because i very much did not know what i wanted to do with my life at 19 or 20 years old and you were already going out into the world knowing you wanted to help other people so that's quite fascinating and Michael is also in sales. So that's another gig he has going on. And he just happens to be also a very talented um, musician. He um, plays the piano. I don't know if you play other instruments or if you're just a piano geek. Michael, what does that look like? Um, mainly the piano. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if if, if it's, an, it's a nice evening outside, I can maybe play a song or or two on the guitar mm -hmm. but um what i'm doing every day and love doing for probably 20 years or so is um improvising on the piano so just sitting down with with nothing on my mind or with something on my mind and bringing that out or looking into um into the moment to see what wants to come up mm. yeah. yeah yeah and it's um it's really special um a couple of weeks ago i i wrote michael a, a whatsapp message and said could you just make me a piece of music and i think with in five minutes he had sent me something back that was sort of bespoke and uh, so we wanted to play today um sunday play and so we'll be doing that as well so Michael, the, the area that I got like curious about that we haven't spoken about at all 
um, is a question that I have around your coaching and how you came to the three principles because I don't even know how that happened. So I thought we could maybe start with how you were coaching before, what you, how you, how you stumbled across the three principles, what you saw that was different, like a paradigm shift, as we know that the understanding is, and how that shifted the way that you work with your clients today and how it, that's ever changing. So if you wanted to just take us into that and talk for as long as you want to about it, that would be really interesting for me to hear and find out. Yeah, for sure. Um, what a nice question. I started um, doing coaching based on the kind of same understanding as I um, mentally treated myself. I had very strong beliefs of how to do things right. Mm. And um, whenever I didn't, I then pretty much ascribed everything that apparently is wrong with my uh, life and my state of mind with not doing that thing right. So I really was pretty tough on myself on trying to get my life under control and me, myself under control. And uh, that kind of came as a consequence of uh, um, quite a like depressive episode in my, in my childhood. Now I, I never was uh, diagnosed um, uh, at, at the psychotherapist and had a, um, had it officially but it's just you know those were like uh, just four to six months periods where I just came back from school and went straight into bed and I uh, spent the whole day thinking about all of the things I would like to have and don't have mm. and how I would like to feel and don't feel um, and then at some point I, I, I think it was uh, in the library where I stumbled upon some classic 80s personal development books um, Maybe it was uh, Dale Carnegie or something. Um, um, and and I was just astonished that there are books about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of feeling very hopeless and doomed. As a child? And, yeah. Okay. As a, as a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, because the way I just used my imagination and thought, I was making life hell for myself like every day and I had good like quote unquote good reasons for it like I thought that's the way how to be better get better create progress but um and probably also a lot of coping and just you know handling like surviving as best as I could mm -hmm. like it wasn't even that progress oriented at that point but when I found that book, I read it and then I read another one and I was just so fascinated by the idea of hope I can change. Mm -hmm. It was still the paradigm of I, there's something completely off and wrong with me, but mm -hmm. at least I had some possibility to change that and to create something better. And that was a nicer experience of life, but it was still a pretty shitty experience of life. Um, but I um, tried better and better to take my job serious of managing my emotions, managing my state of mind, managing my life. I took that job on and um, sometimes it worked. And sometimes when, how, how it happened outside aligned with my expectations and imaginations of where it should be, those were the moments where I allowed myself to, heal, to feel happiness. Um, and pretty much the better I got with those like techniques of managing emotions, um, the more often I had people around me who had a similar view of life uh, ask me about those. Or when I told them, they were like, oh, teach me, tell me. Uh, so those were my first starters into, into coaching. It's just, um, just sharing my best practices um, to handle a problem that, as I can now see, was totally, um, totally made up from the beginning. Mm. I was just not seeing how I, how I did make it up. That's so interesting. Um, I, I just had an idea, and I'm going to tell you what it is. Um, yeah. 
But, but first I wanted to say, you know, one of the very first books that I ever read when I was struggling myself, just feeling also depressed and overwhelmed in my life from overthinking was Dale Carnegie's book, um, Stop Worrying, Start Living. And I think that book is actually from the 50s or the 60s, but it's it rings so modern. It, it, it's, it's so true for all human beings um, today that I thought it was a brand new publication. Um, it had a lot of stories and I remember feeling a little bit better, but not really understanding what was in it. And, but I'm, what, I'm, what I'm hearing you say is, you had a very busy imaginative mind making up problems and and your first attempts were trying to manage those made up thoughts and imagination and i yeah. wondered if you if you i would be so cool let's just let's play some music and like can you improvise something to that time period just like that how that felt that managing emotions would that be fun for you to do I don't know about fun because thinking about that doesn't particular um, uh, um, uh, arise, um, let's like fun emotions rise. It was more of like a, a hero's journey and fight out of okay. misery. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make this a story full of music. Okay, let me let me try to sync up the mic. Yeah. And if it doesn't work, just shout out. Yeah, I'll let you know. comes the improvisation. <laughs>
That was that. Ah, oh, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. I I felt right. I felt right back there to that space. No, thank so, you so much. So so then you started just sharing what was helping you with other people. So how did it move from there? Over and over again, I noticed that it didn't help me. And just to provide context, it did. It, it did make it less shit, my experience of life, it, for sure. Um, but at some point, I was kind of thinking personal development probably doesn't have the answers that I seek. And then I was super interested in the field of psychology. And then the same thing happened. It was a little bit better. And ultimately, again, it kind of didn't have the answers. Mm -hmm. And then I went into a spirituality and non-duality. And like in this understanding that there's, there's no separation in the real world. Um, the real world, there's no duality. Everything is one, and even one is a concept, and that's why they called it non-dual. Um, and um, in, into techniques like letting go and um, the work of Byron Katie, that that really helped me in in moments and um, and situations where where personal development just didn't or made made it worse, even reinforced it. Um, and and that was really a point of a lot of growth and a lot of seeing fresh and new. And with um, every step I kind of took and I saw something as um, way, way better to get back to a more, um, to a better feeling and more successful state of mind. Mm. Um, I kind of took my clients with me. And definitely at, at every point, there were some that didn't, <laughs> didn't want to take that journey with me and um and th that that was absolutely fine but then there were others that suddenly were interested in working with me um and then came the critical point it was in uh, 2017 when i first heard uh, of the three principles by sydney banks mm. and that was the first time that i ever had the thought Maybe it was more it was more a question than a thought. That maybe actually there isn't anything wrong with me. And mm. I, I never thought that before ever. Didn't even consider it. Mm. Yeah. And as you can imagine, that that not only changed my life, it also changed my coaching practice, that changed every every area of my life. It changed my connection to music, to creation to relationships yeah totally because there's a there's a fundamental difference it doesn't matter if you're working as a coach or a therapist or even a doctor or anybody who's working with other people toward any state of health right whether it's mm. mental health or physical health there's a fundamental difference in believing people are are sick are suffering and trying to make them better or knowing that we are fundamentally and deeply okay and i think it's i think it's interesting that you used that term like you you saw that there was maybe nothing wrong with you um because i don't know if you know this leah leah vanley and i have um an online summit that you that's still available at my mysecretlife-online.com and the subtitle of that conference was um there's something wrong with me because when before we came to the understanding each of us both thought there's there's something wrong with us and the majority of the clients that we speak with they say to us i have this life i have a husband, a wife, a, a house, a car, a job, but I'm I'm not happy or I'm not I'm not content. Like something must be wrong with me. And it's huge when they find out that that's not true. Yeah, huge. So, 
it's it's interesting even like um the way you phrased it it sounds uh, so sensible on a um from a view of of society and how most of us were taught like i have those things that are supposed to make me happy but i'm it's not working so something's wrong with me well yeah. a part of that is just correct right <laughs> it's just yeah it's they don't because they can't because that's not how it works mm -hmm. so um what a joy and what a relief to be able to have a glimpse to how it really how it really works mm. how much easier does life get and for, for for sure my life has gotten so much simpler because i'm not constantly busy with trying to make myself feel a certain way mm. so... and that opens up space for life yeah outside of my head outside of my self-image sorry i'm getting a call let me turn it off <laughs> sorry about that Ooh, i get lost a little bit took me to another place yeah yeah well before we go into the specifics of that oh. mm. <laughs> I like to bring in some music there because I think that's just such a hopeful place like what if like for people listening they ask themselves the questions what if there's nothing wrong with me at all mm. I I don't have to manage myself I don't have to bring myself into a certain state I don't have to let go of anything that hopefulness yeah. you want to see what that sounds like for sure it, it definitely uh sounds like lightness to me already mm -hmm. making me not want to do any more interviews without music <laughs> 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 so good <laughs> so
so good. Well, hopefully we'll, um, that would be the end of your series. That would be, uh, that would, that would not be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always have to have you there, Michael. You'd have to like give up all the other stuff you're doing. It would be terrible for you. So, you know, how can we, how can we let people know who may, maybe this understanding is completely new to them, Michael? Yeah. Give them a feeling for what that looks like practically not to have to manage your your state or your feelings or what it looks like practically when there's nothing wrong with you like what what is the direction that you point your clients to now under the umbrella of this new understanding i I, i'd answer those I heard them as two questions actually pretty differently. Like I can describe a bit how it is and then I can describe how I, how I point and how I listen and how I coach. Um, so the first thing that just came up is I'm feeling sad, um, frightened, shitty, discouraged also a lot every day. Hmm. And when it comes up, it just doesn't seem like having a strong connection to a, a outside circumstance or even an inside circumstance. Like an outside circumstance would be this person rejected me or said this, uh, and then uh, this feeling apparently comes from it. Inside would be, oh, I still, I'm still a person that feels sad, mm. right? Or there's still some trauma or some memories or some something that I have to uh, overcome um, and until I do that the feeling is kind of the result the consequence of that and and that just just that just does come up very rarely um, so what happens is I just feel the feeling yeah and then it just goes away It's, it is it's not much more complicated than that sometimes it's, it's just there for four seconds for 10 seconds for 20 seconds and i'm also not in a hurry knowing that it's like what i'm confronted with right now is a feeling it's a complete different experience compared to what i'm confronted with right now is the feeling of a circumstance of something solid because that would mean that as long as that solid thing where the feeling comes from doesn't change, this feeling will come from it more and more again. So all of a sudden, I have an implied job of changing a certain fixed, solid circumstance inside or outside of myself. Yeah. And if not, that would be neglectant of me. It would be responsible of me. Because I, I want to be happy. I want to have a happy and successful and free life. Like it would be irresponsible of me to just ignore this um, this obvious threat to my well-being, mm. right? So, so I took a lot of jobs on to manage stuff with the hope of a better feeling as a result of that. And, and I, I think that was, that makes sense. So based on my understanding of the world and of myself and how it works, I think that was the smartest thing to do. It's just, I was wrong. <laughs> so it didn't work very well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that. So I hear you say, when it looks like it's it's your job to shift uncomfortable feelings, um, move toward happiness, um, get into a better state of mind before you do a b or c as, as long as that makes sense to you then then you're going to do that to to have a more inner successful and outer successful life and i and i hear you say you saw that's not your job yeah and and, and that was that point in 2017 for the first time when i heard um or when i thought or asked maybe I'm not broken 
yeah. like in in core and truth and essence. Um, what I also got is that there is um, as much as there's something that's taken care of me physically when I have a wound and it closes up, or that just because I forget to breathe, I don't stop breathing. It just breathing happens. Um, for the first time, it occurred to me to even think about the possibility of that also existing on a mental plane, on an emotional plane. So what? And what, I was surprised as fuck. Yeah. When I just saw, like, try that out and see what happens, and I actually noticed that I got better without me making myself getting better. Um, but it's really it has it has nothing. Um, I, I, there's no message of like do nothing there's just a message of um there's no need to do something about a certain emotion in the moment mm -hmm. we can still try i can still try and sometimes do and, yeah and, i sometimes do too <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like when i don't everything works out fine when i do everything still works out fine with delay. <laughs> mm -hmm. The delay is the amount of time I need to realize that it's not my job. Sometimes it takes a while. Yeah, yeah. So I hear you pointing to what well, Dr. Dick and Bettinger calls um, our, our mental immune system, right? It, it has a way of just freeing us up, bringing us back to peace of mind automatically. Um, I hear you pointing to the, the fluid nature of, of thought, the thought and feeling connection. It's just passing through. And I wonder, because I'm hearing, I'm hearing you talk about emotion and state of mind and it seems it seems like just such a little thing in the in the life of a human being but emotions and state of mind is something that really it, it grasps our attention a lot all, all day long if we let it and what what do you see happening when your clients can realize that it's going to take care of itself. Like what, what happens positive in their, in their lives? Where, where do things loosen up? Where do things get easier, lighter, come into a state of flow? What are you noticing there? Usually in, in every area of life, mostly noticeable in those areas that sucked before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, There was something that you said that I um I I want to I want to comment on if that's if that's okay yeah go cool. about um you know those you made emotions taking our attention and you know um I I really do like how I see it is that it's it's um it's us doing that mm. um but not because we're stupid because we're smart with a really simple confusion about a certain area that we misunderstand but around that we're really smart and want the best for ourselves and do the best for ourselves always um, it just makes sense to try to try to do how I did when before I had my insights um, because it just it's so obvious that I wanted to be happy I just wanted to, I really wanted to be happy and enjoy my life yeah like um, I did everything for that I tried everything for that um, I just didn't understand that how I used thought in the moment it's what made my life feel like how Right. And like once I got that, like now I, I I don't have at all the association that there's like 
um, you know, those, those triggers, you know, where I kind of have to be careful or I have to be uh, self-aware or st- stuff like that. It's just, it, it, it just seems benign. Mm. Like even, you know, mis- being in a misunderstanding and trying to um, fix an emotion, trying to fix a thing. And even that seems so benign. That is the, 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 one of the most beautiful gifts I got from this understanding is that if I am whole, then that also, that's all, that must also be true when I'm not seeing it. Mm. Yeah. Like either, either it's true, like that, that's the premise of the principles for me. It's like something that's actually true. And because nothing in form is actually true, it points to some, not something, but it points to formless, Yeah. right? And, and there's the constant variable, right? There's thought. Um, there's the principle of, um, of experiencing itself, of, um, and, and there's this principle of the truth about truth, the truth about wholeness, the truth about life. And if, if it's really true that I'm whole, there can't be a condition for that in me seeing that also. Mm. So um, what that changed for me is that I kind of could let myself just be confused sometimes and be wrong sometimes. And, and, and that's kind of, it's, it's like a, a little bit subtle because it kind of on one way looks like I'm, oh, I'm sad or afraid still or anxious, but it's such a joy compared to how that feeling felt when I thought it meant something. Mm. I'm still when I'm anxious and like, I, I don't want to be anxious. I want it to go away. Um, but even that want, even that thought is like, it, it, it lost its heaviness. It lost its danger. It's like the same emotions without the danger that I I I I made up as a uh, as a result of experiencing them. Doesn't seem dangerous to me to be afraid at all. Doesn't feel seem dangerous to me to be insecure at all. Yeah. So what that changes is when I notice I get insecure, I'm not instantly driven to try to get rid of it or see something like right? it's like so easy to make it sound spiritual and three principle-ish like more spiritual sounding concepts to try to get rid of having to feel our feelings it's 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 just what it is without the danger yeah yeah oh, okay i'm afraid And like, how fucking cool! <laughs> yeah. Like, if 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 we are not, if we're really not in danger about anything we experience, well, what comes to mind is the uh, where we sit's favorite, uh, not sit's favorite, but most known quote: "If people would just be, um, if people just would stop Less being afraid of their own experience, experience. Yeah. Yeah. that alone would change the world." Yeah. Well, the good news is it's not hard because in reality, experiences aren't dangerous. So there's actually, it, it does it actually, when, 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 when I, when we see that, there's no need to be afraid. Yeah. Absolutely. It's really hard to be not afraid of something dangerous though. Yeah. I just had to think about our last um, call on the mastermind last week. I thought it was just the most beautiful call. We had like a 90 minute check-in and Michael was doing some coaching, not not Michael, here Michael, but Michael Neal. And so many people were sharing their current experiences and they weren't all rosy and rainbows and fluffy clouds. Like there was, there was every color of, of emotion and fear, insecurity, um, 
and it's just human. Yeah. It's just human. So it's, it's not only not dangerous, it's, it's universal. And I was so, I was so grateful for that conversation because I felt more normal, more human. It's like, okay, this is okay. This is just the human experience. And we're all going in and out of it. Yeah. 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 It's, um, we're kind of going in and out of experiencing it. Yeah. Um, what I what what I really like is um, the the notion of, um, in in essence, the journey is step by step from complete to complete to complete to complete. That's that's the journey. And then the, the the journey in in seeing that that's kind of a more real journey <laughs> of a more traditional journey, like, and also you go up and down, but then over a while there actually can be like progress, yeah. like that comes with having a nicer life by experiencing more of how life really is, just by that. So yeah, we 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 going in and out and we're all human. Mm -hmm. it's just it's really easier to be out in my experience when I know that being out of it experientially doesn't mean anything about the essence of who I am. Should we do one last piece of music before we close out the live? Like, I'm so greedy. I just want to hear you play one more time. <laughs> sure. And maybe we can take, um, see what do we take there? Um, yeah, just wholeness, being, being deeply okay and whole. Mm. Okay.
couple of days ago, um, I was laying in, in bed and I was having some, an experience of emotions of insecurity and lack and worry about some health things and um, what you just played made me think of something that happened like underneath all of that experience I just felt the most solid light coming forth and I heard something and um, I, 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 I sometimes hear my insights and not everybody hears them in words but I did and I heard I am God abundant um, and I heard, I'm God almighty. And I wrote it on a piece of paper a couple of days mm -hmm. ago. And I just felt so strong and so whole. And I just knew, yeah, those emotions you're having at the moment, but I am God abundant. I am God almighty. And that just brought me to tears, your music, Michael, because that's what I, I felt, a, might, a mightiness in the music thank you so much I was um never never tempted to kind of express wholeness because it's so it's like pressing every key on the piano at the same time <laughs> but at the same time <laughs> um no What 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 I what I would never believe, I think, is this you know, depressed fourteen year old. It's like how simple it is. How much I already have everything that I need. Like if if there's one thing I want to kind of get out there today, is an invitation to consider that. Like, what if every one of us already have what we need for a happy, beautiful life? Mm. Yeah. Thank you for that. It's beautiful. And then, you know, then life's just play. Mm. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. You can come, you can come up on a Sunday and just do Sunday play. Yeah. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> so for everyone who's still on the live or who listens to this later, I just want to thank you for being with us today. It was so fun, Michael, to do this with you. It's so just fun to do this with you as well. Thank you so much for inviting me. You're welcome. Just an experiment in play. And um maybe today you heard a lot of jibber jabber from us like you're just like what are they on about like what <laughs> you yeah. know sometimes the conversation um in in this understanding of the three principles is very practical and simple and direct and sometimes it has a different feeling and sometimes it's more abstract and that's a bit where we were today and um just know it it doesn't matter if you understood something intellectually or if you just got a feeling. The feeling is the thing, right? Like, go with that. And um, Michael, for those those people who are still listening at the end and they want to know where they can find you, because Michael does coaching in um, English and in German, I think. Mm -hmm. Have you you do is in English as well? Yes. Yes, yeah, mainly yes. in English. Moment at the moment. As a mainly in English at the moment. Aber er ist auch um, deutschsprachig, also also sehr, sehr gerne. Sehr, sehr gerne in Deutsch, because it goes on both of my, my list in both languages. Where can they find you online if they want to get in touch with you? Um, if you want to get in touch with me, quickest and nicest way probably would be to just drop me an email. Mm. Um, it's just info at Michael Imus, it's my name, dot com. Very cool. And, and if you want to chat, IMAS, IMAS, IMAS Michael IMAS, mm -hmm. uh, and if you if you want to have a chat or see what the experience of coaching with me is like, I I'd love to invite everybody who listens here listens in here today, um, for just a, a not paid session. 
just because I'm curious about you guys. And if you're curious about me, just drop me an email. Hmm. And other than that, there's not much online um, yet. Yet, yet, yet. Mm -hmm. Michael, Michael's very busy. It's hard to get him. That's why we had to do the weekend. He's always got coaching out most evenings over the week. So yeah, thanks, Michael. I hope we can do something else soon. We have some ideas. I have some ideas. I always like to pull him in and say, Michael, we're going to do this. And he's like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> so you guys have a wonderful Sunday and um, we'll see each other soon. Bye. Bye-bye.